Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. For one reason or another, I'm sure I will explain myself in the description box down below. Today we're going to watch some older footage from my former second channel. That's right, when I decided to do booktube content in spring of 2020, I actually launched a second channel. It was called the Westfell Archives. It still exists. You can still watch all my content there. It was named to go with my blog, Westfell Publishing. I got tired of trying to get to 100 again so that I could customize the channel, that kind of thing, when I already had this channel and it was already doing so much better. So in October 2020, I combined the two efforts on the main channel. So if you've never watched the other channel, if you didn't come from there, then this is new content to you. Let's get into it. Today I am doing the Choose Your Fellowship book tag by Books Nest here on YouTube and I found it on the blog Gesticulates. I will have both linked in the description down below along with the questions. If you want to do this, you are tagged. Tag your it. <laughs> Let's hear your answers. I'm going to be reading the questions off of the draft of my blog post. Yes, I will also be posting this as a blog post. I am much more eloquent in writing, so go ahead and check that out if you would rather read it or if you'd like to go check it out after, because I will also have all the information you need on the books I am about to mention, including purchase links, in the blog post. First up, Frodo, a book you're not quite sure if you like or not. And the quote for Frodo is, I will take the ring to Mordor. So for this one, my answer is The Toki Girl and the Sparrow Boy, book one coming home. This one is by Claire Humans. It's a cute story. It's a bit of a coming of age story. It's set in Japan in the 17th century, late 17th century, on the cusp of Western influence into the country. There's a lot of resistance to it within the setting that's chosen. We have our two main characters, Azuki and Shoda. Azuki is a Toki girl and Shoda is a sparrow boy. Toki and sparrow, these are both birds. They are a special type of creature from Japanese lore that start off as birds, but they have the ability to become human children if the right people love them. And that's what happens in this story. They are adopted by a childless couple who love them and they turn into children. They still have the ability to transform back into birds whenever. But there's a sheriff in town who wants his own bird children, and in the process of things, he he ends up killing the parents, kidnapping the kids. They run away. The girl is running away to go off and live with the other Toki birds and just be a bird forever. The sparrow boy is running off to find his sister and bring her back home because there's stuff in the works to make it all right back home. It's a cute story. I liked it. I didn't love it. I found the dialogue was quite clunky in parts. I loved the ink block illustrations, the very traditional Japanese illustrations. Those were beautiful. The reason I'm not sure whether I like it or not is not really the book itself. It's this subject matter with this author. This is a white author who's not from Japan. I've read several blurbs about her and I don't know where she's from. I'm assuming American, but she could be Canadian, she could be UK, I don't know. She's a white author who visits Japan on occasion, frequently, I don't even know that. She's visited multiple times. On one of her visits, she saw a traditional play and Azuki and Shoda were minor characters in this play. She was inspired by them. She decided to write their story. I don't know if the first book sold well or if she was just not done, but there's now a series of these books. I, I got the first book from Voracious Readers Only in June, didn't read it for the longest time, saw that book like seven or eight or whatever was on NetGalley, thought I'd actually read book one, see if it's worth picking up the series or not, so that I could decide whether or not I was gonna claim it on NetGalley. I didn't. Japan is one of the countries in the world that doesn't cry cultural appropriation and get upset because they want to share their culture with everybody and they welcome everybody who enjoys their culture to come share and enjoy their culture. So you're not gonna hear Japanese people crying at cultural appropriation and being upset about this story but it just feels, it feels wrong. It feels a little bit dirty that this woman who is not Japanese and doesn't 
have that familial ancestral connection here has pulled existing characters out of a traditional Japanese story and said, I am going to monetize my own series of stories about these characters. Just feels a little bit slimy. Sorry, Claire, but it does. The book's good. If it sounds like a book you'd like to read, it's it's a good fast YA story. And she's been to Japan at least many times, talked to people, experienced the place, so descriptions, culture is probably fairly accurate. As somebody who hosted a lot of Japanese students and was given a lot of Japanese gifts, stories and whatnot, nothing felt off. It's just... I don't think she's the person who should be telling this story. There we go. Next up, Sam. A book you'll always be loyal to. And the quote, of course, is, I can't carry it, but I can carry you. So the book I will always be loyal to is, of course... The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, because, duh, this is by far my favorite adult-level standalone book ever out there. It's usually marketed as literary fiction, but like, it's, it's two magicians who use real magic in a circus that's full of magic. This is a fantasy book. It's quite pedestrian. If you're not really into fantasy, if you, if you don't normally like fantasy, or if you don't know where to start in the fantasy genre, this is, it's very pedestrian. You'll get into this one easily. This is one of the books that gives me a book hangover when I'm done reading this. If I'm not going to jump right back in, I can't read anything else right away. I just love it so much. I'm not going to gush too much about it because I have already picked this one as my answer in six other tags on the channel and on the blog. So you can go find my uh, gush about it somewhere else. I promise, next time I reread this, I'm going to do a proper review and then I will feature it. I will give it a solo post, probably a solo video. Erin Morgenstern, The Night Circus. That will always be my answer. Pippin, a book you want to reread. And the quote is, what about second breakfast? <laughs> so reread, do you mean besides The Night Circus? Because I always want to reread The Night Circus. My answer here has to be... To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I finally got my hardcover copy. It is here. It arrived today. I'm filming this Thursday night. It arrived today. You may be thinking, but Jenna, you already got an ARC. You don't need another copy. Well, yes, but <laughs> it's beautiful. Look at this beautiful book. I needed this on my shelf and I want to experience reading it with my eyes versus with my ears. I know I will reread this at some point. I would like to experience it in the print form now. I'd also like to be able to push this on people I love who like science fiction, so need to actually have a copy for that. And also, yes, I did get an ARC through NetGalley. It was an audiobook ARC, and audiobooks are very new to that platform. They seem to be randomly expiring off the app, and if the book has been archived by NetGalley, if the publisher is done with having new people apply for it, then you can't get it back on the app. If you've downloaded ebook arcs in any format onto any device, except for there's there, a couple publishing houses have done something to the Amazon Kindle editions where they do actually pull off your library and expire. But for the most part, if you get an ebook arc on NetGalley and you've downloaded it, it's yours to keep, It's you'll be able to find it forever. The audiobook's not so much, you never know when they're going to disappear, so this copy's not going to disappear. They can't take this back from me, I paid for it. <laughs> Mary, a book about friendship. The quote, of course, is, we're going with you, Frodo. So this one, I'm going to talk about a book I just reviewed as part of a tour earlier this week, Moon and Bastet by E.S. Danon. It's her autobiography fictionalized and leading into a big parallel universe mysticism adventure that obviously didn't happen at all. <laughs> it's steeped in Judaism, in Jewish mysticism, but also in Egyptian mythology, Egyptian gods. It's fascinating. The book cover is gorgeous. If I don't put it up on screen somewhere, go to the blog post for this one. The cover is there. All the information is there. Follow the link there to the full post about it. 
because there's more pictures of it posed everywhere. It's it's a gorgeous book. But in this book we have two main characters. We have a girl and a boy who's one year younger. They live at a circus that they work at. She's an orphan taken in by the circus. He has parents who were financially struggling and they sent him off to the circus and they just take him home for a week or two every once in a while. And they end up on this mysticism adventure in parallel universes and all that. And it's because of their friendship and their loyalty to each other that they're able to survive and make it through all of this. That's, it's not the main point of the story. The main point of the story is her journey through mysticism, learning about it and discovering who she is in the grander scheme of multiple realities, multiverses, all that. But there is an ongoing theme of friendship and without this other character, without his loyalty to her and her loyalty to him, they wouldn't make through. This is definitely a book about friendship. Go read my review, you'll find out more. I loved it. Aragorn. A book with a hero or heroine to swoon over. And the quote is for Frodo! <laughs> so for this one, all of these, all of the Iron Druid books, because Atticus is one sexy Irish Druid. <laughs> all of them. These ones. Atticus. Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. And no, I didn't clog up the blog post talking about every single book. I just put up all the pictures <laughs> of all the covers. Legolas. The biggest book on your TBR. That still only counts as one. Firebrand by Kristen Britton. This is the sixth book in the Green Rider series. I loved Green Rider. I loved First Rider's Call. I at least started... I don't even know where it is. I'm missing some of my books. I know I started The High King's Tomb. I'm not sure if I finished it. I've got Mirror Sight down here. I think that's... that's either four or five. Whichever one's in between that I'm missing is on my Kobo app. And then this is number six. I recently snagged it as a uh, bargain book. <laughs> Marking there because it was a bargain book. I'm not ready to read this one yet. I'm not ready to read number six, but it's on my TBR because one of these days I will finish the series. This is 784 pages long. For comparison though, like this is normal book pages. This is like Bible thin pages because this is a longer book. 784, 880. Gimli, a short but fun read. Shall I get you a box? So this one I'm also going to point to a review I did very recently for a blog tour. I'm going to talk about A Goddess in Time by Adriadne LaFox. This is the book I thought I was going to read when I picked up Signe Pike's The Forgotten Kingdom as an arc on NetGalley. Because you see, on NetGalley, the publisher described it as Outlander meets King Arthur. And if you're familiar with the Outlander series at all, We've got a modern-day woman who is pulled back in time into 6th century British Isles culture, that kind of stuff. The Forgotten Kingdom has no time travel. Goddess in Time does. Goddess in Time starts in the modern day, it starts in 2019, at Harvard. Our main character is a student at Harvard. She's an anthropology student, and when her thesis professor, thesis supervisor, sends her on a an archaeology trip over the reading break to England. She finds herself at this lake that is suspected to be the lake. She's obsessed with Arthurian legend and she's going to check out this lake that's suspected to be the lake. She phones up the guy who inspected it last who assures her it's a perfectly normal alkaline lake and then he she hangs up the phone with him and fairy lakes appear and she gets pulled in and nearly drowns and when she comes back up She's in the 6th century, and Vivian, the Lady of the Lake, is there telling her that it's time to wake up the Once and Future King, and it's her job, and only her job. Go read my full review for that one, I'm not going to take up the whole video talking about it. It's a very fast read, it's, it's adventure, it's romance, it's adult characters, but it's written like a YA, so it's 202 pages long, but I read it in, like, a morning. <laughs> it goes very fast, it's not very deep. It's not very complicated. It's formulaic, it's predictable, but it's fun, and it's King Arthur, so there's a lot of familiar faces, and I just, I love what she did with it. Boromir, a series in which you never made it past the first book. <laughs> Poor Boromir. They've taken the little ones. 
So for this one, I'm going to point at A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. Because I read A Game of Thrones, I thought it was okay. I started A Clash of Kings. I started skipping chapters because I only liked Arya and Tyrion, and I didn't like anybody else's chapters. There was not enough of them, and I gave up on it. When the TV series came out, somebody bought us a DVD set of the first season when it came out on DVD. I watched most of them with my sister. And then like over time, as I've gone back and visited family, sometimes it's on. So I've seen bits and pieces of the series later on, but like, I just, I, I don't care that much. I like Tyrion, I like Arya, that's it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that look into the archives from the Westvale archives. Maybe now my Twitter and Instagram handle makes sense. <laughs> If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!